Cora TV. The world is thinking. We have here the unity of science and religion and the laboratory for religious life and practice is experience. Religion is not about pie in the sky when we die. It's about now. And religion tries to make sense of what's happening to us now and it gives us the mechanisms where we can have hope for some sort of meaningful life despite all the disappointments. Now, despite our comfortable materialistic lives, there are many who say, is that all? And I think that there is a yearning for the meaning of life and for a spiritual life. And I argue that most of you, and I'm now going to insult my audience for the next five minutes, most of you are religious. And I argue that these people are religious because we've invented a new religion. The rise of environmentalism parallels in time and in place the decline in Christianity and socialism. And this new religion is just terrified of doubt. It's terrified of scepticism. It's terrified of uncertainty, yet it claims to be underpinned by science. It's actually a fundamentalist religion with a fear of nature. It has its own high priests and its own holy writ. And like many religions, it attracts believers by announcing apocalyptic calamities, unless, of course, we change our ways. Its credo is repeated non-stop. There's a new language that's been invented. Logic and contrary data and questioning, they're not permitted. Heretics, like myself, are inquisitorially destroyed. It's a new religion. It states that now is the most important time in history, And people are told that humanity is facing the greatest crisis in the history of time. We must make sacrifices now. Well, this religion is using the thinking that derives from Judeo-Christian tradition. If the world's been destroyed, then we humans are to blame. Now, this New Age religion tries to re-mystify the world, a world that its adherents neither experience nor do they try to understand. And the apocalyptic doomsdayers promote their new religion with seven-second television grabs. This is a disunity between religion and science. And this science derives from the Enlightenment, where we bathed in doubt and scepticism and uncertainty. All that's thrown overboard. Contrary facts are just ignored. Enthusiastic reporting by non-scientists is undertaken. They report new science with alarmist implications but they don't report any contrary information. Non-scientific journalists and public uh, celebrities write polemics and they encourage the public to get hot and bothered and alarmed. The environmental religion produces widespread fear and longing, all wanting a simple, all-encompassing narrative of the world. It offers an alternative account of the natural world with which the adherents have very little contact. It's a city-based religion. Environmentalism embraces a myth of the fall, a Christian myth, the loss of harmony between man and nature. This has been caused by a materialistic society. It searches for a lost Eden that probably never existed. Environmental evangelism has a ritual and a language that have totally replaced substance. There have been thousands of global warmings and global coolings. And through my geologist eyes, global coolings have always depopulated the planet. We are the first generation of organisms on planet Earth that has ever feared a warm climate. Environmentalism really creates and exacerbates problems in the third world with disease and food shortages and destroys economies. It's highly flawed. When the environmentalists finally recognise that they are actually religious, then a real discussion can take place with other scientists. Until then, they're just like the creationists. They claim that they're scientific, but really the foundations are religious and dogmatic. So your contradictory religion of environmentalism has given you a purpose in life. You've ignored all the contrary evidence, fine, but your religion provides you some of the stitches that hold the fabric of society together. Now, unless these people here are anti-environmental, I argue, how on earth can they argue that we'd be better off without religion when they themselves are religious?